Hey everyone, Maka here. I'm bringing you an in-depth preview of the RIPD game coming out on Xbox Live Arcade, PSN, and Steam on Wednesday, July the 17th. This is the game that goes along with the movie coming out in July. So here we are at the main menu. I'll be showing you a lot of things. You'll basically know everything about the game if you decide uh, to look into it. You can just watch this video and I'll show you almost everything. Uh, those were the achievements. There's 15 achievements worth 400 gamer score. There's leaderboards, obviously. Just want to get those out of the way before we kind of continue on with the more important and juicy stuff. So you have your quick match and custom match options. If you're going to want to play solo by yourself, not with an online partner, you're going to want to play custom match and just start the game with nobody in your party. This is your character screen. At the very top, you see a gold bar gold meter. When you fill up that meter, you unlock a final boss battle. Now you have two weapons to choose from. There's a variety of weapons you can purchase for uh, cash that you need to earn by completing levels. And you can also upgrade these weapons. So here are all the weapons, um, including a banana and a hairdryer. And uh, for example, here's my shotgun, which I want to upgrade. You can see the price is 6,500 to upgrade and my cash is in the top right corner. I'm going to press X and upgrade it. There's not an actual upgrading system other than purchasing upgrades and therefore your weapon becomes better, but there's no actual parts or anything. Then there's consumables. These you have to buy one of them for every time you start a new level. And that's why they're called consumables because you consume them. Now these have different effects on the game. For example, the one I bought will allow me to unlock abilities faster. There's another one that will let you see through walls and have like x-ray vision. And then there's a whole bunch of them. Uh, you can slow down the video if you want to see. Now on the right hand side of the screen, we have our difficulty. You have an easy, normal and hard, which is mild, spicy and hot. You have seven total levels. I do think you unlock a final boss battle after you complete that gold meter, which would make it eight levels. And then there are two characters, Roy and Nick. Uh, played by, I guess that's Ryan Reynolds and some old guy in the movie. Unfortunately, I don't know who that is off by uh, just by that. And then you have a bet screen. This bet screen is only active when you have two people playing and two humans playing. So that's why you didn't see anything happen on that screen. But if there was another person with me, basically what happened, it would be process of elimination. There's five total bets and we take turns picking bets that we don't like. And in the end, there's one bet left and uh, basically that bet becomes the active bet. So for example, if headshot count uh, came up, uh, what would happen is there'd be a little bet thing in the right hand side of the screen showing how many um, headshots you have in comparison to the person you're playing with. So if you have negative five, that means you're losing by five. And if you have like 10, that means you have 10 more headshots than the person you're playing against. If you do win the bet, you get um, some multiplier for your cash. Now there's a lot going on screen. I'm going to talk to you one step by step exactly what's going on, what's on screen and what you're looking at. So this game, to those who don't understand it yet, it's a third person shooter. It's placed in an arena style of game. There's no story as far as I'm, uh, as far as I know, although there is a final boss battle that might have to tie in with the movie. Um, there is no actual campaign to say in this game. It's it's an arena style game. So on our top right, we have a timer and uh, you know a picture of our face with a ring around it and a number. That number is the amount of lives you have, I believe. And then the ring around it is like your health, and the timer ticks away your health. So as far as I understand it, I might be a little bit wrong. Uh, as time progresses, you lose health. But if I get to zero, I don't die. I just go to 12 instead of 13. Once I get to zero, I think I die permanently and then lose. Although I'm not exactly sure I've never gotten to that point. So that's what's happening in the top right corner. Then you have to, your tutorial hints. And right above your tutorial hints would be where your bets are. In the bottom right hand corner, you have your consumables. So I have um, the ability to get abilities quicker. And then in the bottom left, you have your two weapons plus your ammo. And when you kill an enemy and you see a little red spike, that means that they dropped ammo and you have to walk over it to pick it up. Now there's nothing in the top left, but if you look in the top middle of the screen, that is your abilities. You can cycle through abilities using your LB and RB um, buttons, and there's five abilities. I did skip encounter two uh, because nothing really important happened and I didn't want to waste your time. But at the top of the screen, you have your abilities. Now there's five total abilities and abilities are earned by killing Dedos. Dedos are the main enemies here you do see. And uh, the first ability, uh, this little siren looking icon, is the ability to regenerate some health. The second icon you see are like chains. And uh, chains allow you to chain up enemies so that you can basically kill them. Now the chain works for about 5-10 seconds. The third one right here is the turret. I believe I use it right here. And um, 
the fourth one lets you become like a ghost and leave your body and go kill enemies without being touched. So that's it's basically like invincibility, aka god mode. And the last one is demonic spikes. You basically do it and these spikes come out of the ground and kill just about everyone on the map. So now there is a challenge active. Challenges will show up in the top left corner of the screen and for this challenge I have to capture these two zones within three minutes without dying. Uh, no, I can die actually, I just have to do it within the three minutes. So challenges are something that come up. There are two, two challenges for every uh, arena or every map, however you want to call it. They're obviously different every time, but uh, you'll have two for every five waves you play. So there are a total of five waves. Um, so this one I have three minutes to capture two zones, it's not too hard. I am playing on the easiest difficulty as I didn't want to look stupid and I wanted to show you guys a lot of different things. So I figured easy difficulty would let me do that the best. This game is quite difficult on hard, especially if you don't have a lot of upgrades. I am speaking quite fast, hopefully uh, I'm still with you here. But um, keep in mind that the game is quite difficult, but with upgrades I would assume it becomes much easier. Now, you see me building up the abilities here. You tend to try to save the good ones for when you need them and not use them if you don't have to. Uh, especially when you need health and that health one really helps if you don't want to lose any lives. So what, completing these challenges will help you earn cash at the end of the level. Now I'll show you the post game screen and exactly what your earnings are and what you can use them for after the game. There's a total of five waves. As I said, I skipped wave two. Wave one is pretty basic. And as the waves increase, obviously you get more enemies and tougher enemies. So far you've seen the basic enemies. You've seen a big guy that takes a lot of bullets and like there's a few melee guys and then a few uh, guys with like machine guns like that one. And then there's also some guys that try to melee you. And now you can melee in this game as well. So your, your options to kill Dedos are melee, shooting uh, of either one of your primary weapons, and then using your abilities, such as the turret. As I said, you do have to pick up ammo from dead people. As you see, hopefully you do see me kill someone and drop ammo. Uh, none of these guys are dropping ammo as you're watching on screen, actually. That's unfortunate. But ammo shows up as a little red spike. Now, I explained quite a bit. I'm going to quickly look over and think about if there's anything I didn't explain. And no. So basically, you're given like 10 seconds in between encounters. Encounters are basically another word for waves. As I said, there's five waves. There's encounter one, two, three, and four. And then there is the final encounter, which is... Um, similar to a boss battle, but the boss isn't always hard. The boss is random as far as I know. It changes every time you replay the same map. So now Encounter 4 has started, and there should be a new type of enemy on the map. They are known to me as the... Uh, I carry a car door as a riot shield enemies, and they are pretty annoying. As you see right here, they have machine guns, and they carry these car doors, and they're pretty hard to kill, even when you're getting those headshots through the window. But as you see me here, the general um, thing you want to do to win is build up those abilities when you can and then try to get enemies into like one zone without getting too close to you and then you're going to either shoot them or melee them depending on the difficulty and uh, everything you have available to you. So here I have the turret kind of uh, covering me on the left and then I'm cleaning up the guys on the right. There is like an upstairs part to this. Uh, level I don't think it's necessary to use I uh, don't show it personally and as far as I know the enemies just spawn they don't like come from anywhere they just appear on the map so I do use four of the five abilities the one ability I don't use is the fourth one as I don't find it very useful that's where you become a ghost and you can basically just run around the map trying to kill people without taking any damage um, I think what I'm going to do for now is I'm going to leave you guys with in-game audio until the end of Encounter 4 and I'll join you back at the beginning of the final encounter or Encounter 5 which is literally in about a minute or two and uh, that little spike thing you see from one Dedo to the other one that's just like a healing Dedo that allows um, that Dedo can heal other enemies so you want to take care of them as fast as possible. I'll catch up with you guys in like a minute.
Hey guys, I'm back. So, now that we completed Encounter 4, we have our final encounter known as the boss encounter or the criminal encounter. So during this final encounter, there will be one special enemy. There are a variety of enemies. I get the most annoying one and hardest one by far on this video, which is the blue flame guy. I don't know if they have names or not. I haven't seen the movie. Obviously, the movie's not out yet. I'm sure they have any, you know, names and there's actors that play them and maybe they are significant to the movie. Unfortunately, I don't know if they are for certain. Um, so the Deto, that's the criminal. There's only going to be one criminal per five waves. So basically, after you kill it, the game ends and you get to choose a different map. So there's only one. And you see his um, life come up in the right hand corner when he spawns and he's going to be marked by either a you know special color or pattern. This guy's blue flame. Usually they glow like a golden yellow color and uh, enemies also do often throw grenades which are quite dangerous. So you want to keep uh, your eye out on the hood for that. So this guy is definitely the most annoying as you can't get too close to him because he will hurt you with his blue flame. But if you also back off too much, you can't hit him with stuff like your shotgun. And um, he also regenerates health if you run out of ammo, which is pretty sucky, especially on the harder difficulties. So here I tried to use like my turret to kill him. Anyways, I cleared out all the enemies and he's the last one. Once you get enough damage on the criminal, you will down them as you see me here and they will go on their knees. At this point in the game, you have two options. You can shoot the criminal in the face a few times to take down the remaining health he has and that will be an execution and it will end the round right away you will get less points than option two so option two is to arrest the criminal as i'm doing now to arrest the criminal you basically have to capture it like a like a zone you have to stand near him very close to him for about maybe a minute as you see that bar rising in the bottom uh, of the screen and once it reaches 100%, they become arrested and you also get extra cash at the end of the game. So it is usually a general rule to arrest them when you can, um, when it's possible and easy. But you always have the option if you're getting overrun by enemies just to kill them. So now that I arrest him, I believe the game ends. There you go. Uh, he's arrested and yeah, so I do have to clear out two more enemies They're gonna be a little further away, but I'm gonna use my pistol which I've upgraded So it is quite an accurate weapon for me personally And that's the assignment complete after completing all five of the encounters I do unlock an achievement for completing both challenges So I'm just gonna open that really quick and show you guys um, And after that I'm basically gonna show you the post game screen as well as uh, some extra additional content that they do offer in this game. So there it is, I have 7 out of 15 achievements. I think that's 125 out of 400 gamer score. Most of the gamer score is earned later on. Now, after the game, you get this RIPD report. You basically get your kills, deaths, how many times you were downed, and you get how much money you were paid out and why for the mission, for the secondary objectives, and for like the bets and stuff. And then you can look at the scoreboard. The scoreboard's very, very basic. It gives you your kills and your deaths and your bet if there is a second person in the room with you. And it has a little uh, icon to tell you what difficulty it was on. So you back out and you get the gold meter. I obviously increased my gold meter just a little bit there. And you can go to your archives. And your archives are basically uh, movie related content that's available in the game that is unlocked through progression. And as far as I understand, when you go to the last one, it says this content is locked. To uh, unlock it, you have to get 100% completion of your gold meter and uh, kill the final boss. And once you do that, that becomes available. I will sh quickly show you some help and options of how to play in the gameplay stuff. Uh, you can pause the screen if you want to. I'm going to go through this pretty quick just to have it on screen for you guys. And uh, that's about it. So thanks for watching. As always, make sure you subscribe. I bring this kind of content on the regular and I make sure to post it as soon as the embargo launches. I get these games uh, usually in the ideal situations. I get them a little early and I get to play them for you guys and uh, take reviews and look into them like this. I do have a separate video that is a review that will talk about exactly what I like and dislike about the game, whether or not it's good and worth your money. So thanks for watching. As always, I'll see you guys next time. And as always, peace.